is healing in a healthy place right now. Or is it out of place? I don't know why I said it like that. Jack's really chill. He doesn't yeah, talk yeah. like that at all. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of a, this is interesting because I imagine the answer for normal, heroic, and mythic plus up to like 17 or 18 are pretty different from the answer, you know, I don't know, mythic plus 20, mythic rating, what's going on? Yeah, so funny enough, you may not, it may not appear that way when you look at the actual uh, notion item, but I've seen a lot of people in chat say our title today for the stream is clickbait and awful. And the yes, you have, a you have a, you actually have a, a... Yes, so we'll get to that. Have but we got in trouble for it, Matt? No, uh, some people said stuff, but it's fine. Um, Interesting. Because there's a point to it. And you may notice that we're doing a lot of complaining and a very specific amount of complaining about very specific things. We were yes. uncomplaining earlier. We were happy earlier. Yes, so that we're, 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 we, have, we have uncomplained and also complained. How does this make sense? Find out when we get to that point. For now, it's healing time. Wow. Or is it healing time at all? Um, when is healing time? It's not healing time. It's not. It's healing time. No, it's not healing time. Well, it's, it's not healing time. It's not healing time. It's healing time, Dad. What's That's, happened to you? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> That's the representation of what it's like to be healed. Uh, everything, oh. is, everything is fine until it's suddenly not fine. You were doing a meta thing. I was, yeah. Oh, I see it now. Um, um, that's the best part about you're like, ah, I think a problem might happen. You hit up and you're like, and then everyone's dead. Yeah. That's why exactly. you, that's why you as a healer think. Maybe look at timers. Um, but okay. Ew. So for season three, they didn't actually buff player health or enemy damage, uh, as was the case in season one and two. Instead, they just used an increased item level cap to combat the scaling issue, ballooning the item level substantially from season two. They also directly nerfed uh, healing for most specs in order to make healing less bursty and powerful. Because when it's harder for a healer to top off a health pull, Blizzard then tries to compensate by making incoming enemy damage less bursty by comparison. But the problem with this method alone is that we're scaling so much more heavily than they seemingly anticipated with the combination of like new talents, item level, and all of that. Because now that, oh, look at this, man, many players are approaching and exceeding uh, item level 470 to 80, as I'm sure you are right now. <laughs> I'm 459. <laughs> Uh, we are once again seeing a, lot of, seeing a lot of burst healing happening. They try to combat this by adding rot damage to almost every encounter in Emir Drasil. A bunch of negative healing absorbs, like with Smolderon, Laradar, Tindrel, as well as adds that uh, needed healing up on Laradar and Frack, That's cool. which I enjoyed. I liked having somewhere to throw all, that, uh, all those heals, uh, especially because I can just pop a Radiance on them and then go back to my real job, which is doing damage, of course, because I'm bad. Pop keeps on asking me, one of our raiders, she's like, How, why are your damage percentiles so good? And I'm just like, Pop, your problem is you're healing. Oh, yeah. Her, um, it's very funny looking at logs and just saying it was, uh, was it last week? I think I was looking at some logs and I just see like some purple damage logs from Pop. I'm like, how did that happen? And then look at Eric's damage log and go, oh, because he was healing. Because <laughs> Eric did all the healing. She just got to press damage buttons. That's fun. That, That's one. <laughs> I can tell you how to orange parse every time with just one simple trick. <laughs> you know, be a warlock with cookies. Don't do damage and... Uh yeah, don't do your job as a healer. Anyhow, we're currently reaching upwards of 40 to 50% over healing right now. Um, Damn. Yeah, I mean, often, oftentimes, like, I do just kind of blanket about shit just so I'm like, ah, mm. you'll probably take damage. I have more than enough resources. My mana bar hasn't moved. I don't care if everything I do is over healing. Maybe if I've just blanket atoned a bunch of people and I'm just doing normal DPS and somebody happens to trip over their shoelaces and takes like 10 damage, then maybe I'll get to heal it. That's at least how I kind of feel mm -hmm. um, as, as a healer. That being said, Pop's an amazing healer and she will generally... You know, she will reach the, she'll hit the bars before I do. Yeah. Which, you know, it's kind of, I, I wonder, I wonder why. I wonder I, why I and I wonder I, how. I wonder why and how as well. Yeah. Um, nothing, but it's nothing to do with this spreadsheet full of timings. Like, <laughs> fucking turbo nerd. Like, yeah. Uh, it's, but it's, it's interesting how even, you know, um, I was about to say discipline daddy. I should say priest daddy. That's a, you know, both of those are really bad, especially in this country. Mm. Um, 
individual known in the community to play a disciplined priest. It's interesting that uh, he appears to be talking about this. But yes, we're now in a situation of, oh, there you go. Whoever is able to out-snipe who in order to actually get value from their healing. Uh, that is uh, what healing is like right now, rather than being a group effort to try and keep everyone alive. Uh, yeah. Even, yeah, absolutely. Um, none of the fights, even during uh, the race, got five healed, even with plenty of damage going out and being less gear than Gil's progressing right now. Yeah. Interesting. Um, this is not only just uh, because of the bursty healer thing again, but also Prot Paladin having strong off healing and most classes, of course, having like defensives, externals and stuff in the race to world first. Uh, double Disc Priest Mistweaver HPAL gave loads of DR and externals. Uh, yeah, and also... Uh, strong raw healing. Turns out you can have everything. Yeah. Uh, right. Basically, as he says, it's a situation of two extremes. You're either needing to heal too much because you're actively ignoring or f uh, failing to do mechanics, or you're fighting against each other to uh, basically overhealing all the time when mechanics um, are don't properly and people are well geared. Are done properly. <laughs> done properly yes. Sometimes for us, it's are don't properly, I think, though. Um <laughs> Yeah, I didn't do. I just. Well, what do you think about healing? I don't I mean, have you're, thoughts you're, about healing. Yeah, you're disc have, right now. Hmm? You're disc right now, or not disc? I'm sorry, your right balance. I'm fuck. Well, I'm glad you know my character. Um, yeah, actually, we haven't played together since this patch at all. Yeah, you're in, <laughs> you're in Japan. Yeah, you're you're playing, and then I'm and now I'm playing. You're not. Uh, but yeah, I I have not had a single problem in anything I've done from healing. And I've tanked M+, plus, and I haven't tanked hard M+, pluses. Like I've been tanking like 14s to 16s. Um, and in raid, anytime someone dies, it's them goofing. I'm like, or like, yeah, like I died because I didn't, I didn't uh, join the group for like, basically closeness under the, under Nimue's intermission or after the, the phase. And there's like other times I die, it's my fault. There's never been a point where healers have had to like struggle. It's always just oh no. Yeah, it's Healing very rare that you're just being enough. chipped away. Yeah, and also yeah. I like Hellstone's healing pot. I have renewal, and I have like bark skin every three seconds. It feels like, and I also have bear form, and I can swap into bear form uh -oh. and like frenzied regen if I need to. Matt, do you know what this means? Yeah, this means. We need to strip utility from the game and put more things in the global cooldown. Definitely. It certainly... is getting too powerful. <laughs> Just uh, do a BFA. Done. Game design. It certainly feels like there's a... Just a blanket... It Healing is too easy at the minute. It feels that way. Like, just... It just kind of does. I mean, I do but, it, so it must be. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? Because I know we've talked about this before. We've talked about this before, where um, it's... I don't know how to describe it. Uh, I completely just lost. You know when you have a sentence and oh, your and sentence, the sentence just, just goes yeah. away? Yeah, uh, it's kind of like the problem of healing being tied to failure. Like mechanic failure. Mm. Because, I know we talked about this at length before. You've got X damage coming in. And you've got Y healing going out. And that almost feels the same way as there's DPS. You know, you need you need so much DPS to kill the boss. Yeah. You don't suddenly need more or less DPS a lot of the time. Maybe if you like get like ads in or whatever, but that's usually like a, a, a rare thing or like a, a shield happens accidentally. It's always like, well, you have to survive the right amount of damage as a tank. That's your job. And you have to do the amount of damage as a, as a, as a DPS. That's your job. But healers, the amount of damage that comes out to the group changes depending on mechanics. So it's like, how do you, you have a variance of how many people are making mistakes, personal mistakes and stuff like that to work with as a healer. Yeah. So that makes it feel like the actual designing of the experience for a healer is different. It's not just, well, we know you can heal 100 in five seconds, so we're going to do 100 damage in five seconds and see how it works. Because then someone stands on a landmine and it's 120 damage. And now you're like, well, how do you uh, like work for, how do you work that out as a designer? Or it's kind of the... The interesting thing, I think. But yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems easy. At least in red. Yeah, it's easy. It's er, not easy, sorry. It's interesting to me in that uh, this is a discussion we've been having since like... 
Siege of Orgrimmar? Yeah. yeah. Okay, no, probably yeah. longer than that, but the last time, or the time where I remember it really exploding was Siege. A little bit mm. different in Siege, because it was mostly based on Absorbs being super powerful, hence the solo heal of Garrosh. Uh, heroic. Anyway, Mythic Plus then. On the opposite end of the spectrum, outgoing burst is incredibly high, even after initial waves of tuning, with loads of one-shot mechanics that cannot be out-healed or avoided without an immunity. Bosses like the manifested uh, Timeways in, um, I was about to say Defense of the Ancients, oh my god, Dawn of the Infinite, <laughs> and Soulbound <laughs> Goliath um, in Wormrest have insane amounts of burst to the point where that raw healing simply cannot uh, counter them, so you need obviously, yeah. your external stuff. Uh, and then this is something that eventually will define the meta where classes and specs are brought more for their defensiveness and survivability over damage and healing output. Oh my god, there's god comp like things are happening again. Yep. 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 That's yep. the thing. What is? What would you think is good game design? Give players a bunch of tools. Have a bunch of problems. Problem. Infinite scaling ruins the entire design instantly. Done. Well, not instantly. You have to get. You have to. You have to get to that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It it works completely fine up until it doesn't because it's designed to break, like we talked about uh, decently last week, and that's where it's the exact same thing we talked about with like Ogvoker uh, before. It's just yeah, it's a support, and it's a DPS that does more than DPS. It's bringing it. It's not bringing a second healer, but it sort of is a little bit, but without the extra cost. And it's that it's that thing we've always had the same discussion we've had it since World of Warcraft released, which is why can a DPS heal and also do DPS? That's mm. unfair because they're better now. And then you go, well, okay, then druids, you're doing less DPS than everyone else. Yeah. And then you go, but but that's not fair. It's like no, well, yeah, it's different. It's 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 not fair. Because it's, you're different. That's how it works. I straight up just there's a, there's pros and cons to what you're doing. Like there's pros and cons to picking something and not picking something else. Mm-hmm. And then that boils down to when the, the pro is right for a situation. Then there you go. The pro is right for the situation. And in this situation, the pro is on the Ogvoker being able to add defensiveness to the party without the cost of DPS. So that's, they need to add uh, a bigger con. Yeah, to that's, that's it. why I was actually quite surprised recently whenever mm. they uh, didn't add more support specs. Because I kind of thought yeah. like, oh, are they just going to make this a more defined role and then have there be competition almost within a, you know, one one three format up to like Mythic Plus 24 and then a, I don't know, a one 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 two format uh, beyond that, both there being, you know, competition sort of between the supports. Hard uh, hard to say, but obviously, I mean, we know that they are just leaving Ogvoker as the only support in the game, so... Yeah, which is interesting. Interesting. It's just... Bleh. Bleh. Now, there is another um, uh, another one from Therun. No, there's no R there, Thane. <laughs> just add an R, Michael, why don't you? Uh, yeah, who uh, p- published a video called Healing Still Sucks in, uh, in Dragonflight. Quite interesting, actually. This um, this chart here, Antorus overhealing forty four point sixteen percent, the highest ever compared to a Mirdrasil. That said, that's Antorus. You know the absolute crazy bonkers tier where everybody got what was it was three legendaries by the end, three legendaries. No, okay, no, it was two legendaries. It was your maxed out rune. You know the rune thingies, soul the forgy rune thing. Like crucible. Netherlight Crucible, yeah. that being maxed. Yeah. I actually remember Legion nine. Vol maxed. RSI. Legion RSI, mm. RSI in your wrists because your haste values are so big. But you actually look at these overhealing values and you see that they are between 25 and 30% for most raids. Nathria actually 23.5%. You can see them actually, though, from Castle Nathria, they increase. Yeah. Basically, I mean, Sepulchre goes down a bit, but basically. They just keep going up and up and up and up and up. Yeah, so, um, right, let's try to sort of break into some of the points that were made. 
Raid healing has drastically changed when compared to previous expansions and raids, especially when comparing to the very rewarding healing fights of Sludge Fist from Nathria and Nazoth from Nihilotha. Man, Sludge Fist, what, uh, what a fight. I wish I was a healer during that. That being said, it was a fun one to DPS as well. A lot of this is power creep that we've all got from new talents, various reworks, and then just raw power from item level and stat scaling. Here's a quote from Thane. If we have another expansion where healing feels like it did in Dragonflight, then I think I'm done. I don't think I can do that again. Interesting. So this is not what you want to hear from a, a higher-end healer. No. Uh, so, spot healing got buffs in 10 2 compared to the rest of Dragonflight. As many single-target healing abilities just felt like they did nothing. Yep, I think everybody remembers what that was like. Uh, this alone has made M-plus feeling much better compared to previous seasons. Uh, not perfect, but better. So that is a good thing. Uh, most all throughput cooldowns were also nerfed coming into 10 2 because of how powerful they seemingly were. Thayun agrees that they weren't, uh, they aren't individually powerful, but that you can layer them all uh, to then achieve super bursty healing. Uh, you know, that it's just more powerful than it was before. So to sort of analyze things so far from our basic perspective of healing, it's not even like major systems. It's just the design's more powerful and we're scaling a lot. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's kind of rough because that's kind of the foundation bit that ain't working. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like there's clearly a, a core fundamental healing design question here. It's like, why does this keep turning out this way? Why does it not just work? Why do you not make it so it's good? I haven't goes, well. You've worked it yeah. Ian, fellow healer, why don't you make it so that it's good? God, Matt has thrown the gauntlet down on you, personally. <laughs> and obviously the, the answer to... Grogthok, <laughs> just to make it good. Easy clap. Of course. Obviously the answer to why... Heroic mode make it good ...is because it's, <laughs> it's hard to make it good. Because it's complicated. Because it's all these things that are different to like how the like everything else works. It's full on just now nah, the how how do you balance healing with everything else? How do you make it how do you make fear and danger feel enjoyable and not more stressful than anything else? And that's kind of the problem. Where healing is horrible and a stressful mm. nightmare thing. And you look at you look at PvP and you see the problem there. Where obviously it's kind of the same with the a lot of PvP healing issues boiled down to, well, you can't. It's almost the same as the M plus stuff, but it's just like, yeah, this is not this is not good. This is not a good experience because healer is actually like the yeah the 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 role that invites the most stress because doing deep damage is just you hit your, you hit your happy little buttons. You hit your happy little glowy buttons. Whenever your weak orbs glow, you hit the button, and you're just sat there like, you know the what I call it? the um, oh, I suppose I called a meme, the video of your fella in the, the blue chair and the Logitech singing along. He's all happy playing his video game, and then the other sweaty boy who's hammering the keys like crazy. That like uh, that dichotomy of player experience, and it feels like a lot of the time healers, by nature of healing being a job that's people are dying you have to stop you have to you have you have to be the backup for people's failure yeah you have to be the one solving these problems instead of just doing your thing that is like it is the the sweaty key mashing stressful experience so what's interesting to me so from, from there he does go to talking about just most raid drs and survivability cooldowns were also nerfed going into 10 2 but they were just very powerful for very long however as before there's a fine line of balancing these nerf them too much then wanting to bring a, a second copy of a certain class or spec may never be the case anymore as an example you don't really want to bring a second warrior um, anymore to gain access to an additional rallying cry because it is no longer powerful enough to warrant that then he goes on to the topic of mana <clears throat> and this is interesting to me, playing as a Disc Priest, because my mana is functionally, uh, like, infinite. Yeah, you don't have a resource problem, you just have a, a like, a water cup problem. Mistweaver is apparently also very happy for mana. Uh, and then over on the other side of things, we've got all the holy uh, paladins who are screaming because, you know, they... Now, they did have, like, Crusader Strike is way cheaper now because, of course, they had to... You know, they had to spend mana to earn the holy power to then do, you know, yep. all the design inherent uh, interesting things of Holy Paladin. 
Um, so yeah, they're going oom still. And then a preservation of ochres back into a temporal anomaly. They go oom within three minutes, apparently. <laughs> if they don't, they're almost infinite. <gasps> Class. Wow. Class. I'm sure that's fun. Mm -hmm. uh, some overhealing... Wait, where's the overhealing data? Ah! Thanks to Warcraft Logs and their Patreon feature that lets you go way back. Brackets not on that. I mean, hey, very got got to pay the bills. Warcraft Logs do awesome work. Yeah, uh, I went and gathered like overhealing numbers in the first five kills for each boss since Antorus. Hang on. These are the stats we've already looked at. Oh, wait, no, but on a per-boss basis. Yeah. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. J Jordan really is into gathering data. Loves the it's data, ju right? just a... I mean, which of course uh, I totally get. You know, we love doing our data dive videos because um, they uh, they be fun. So, what are what are our sort of trends here? I mean, there's what we've already kind of uh, discussed. Actually, I think this this may be more interesting. Note from poster: I didn't post it to make DF look bad. I just know in healing circles, those that are talking heads frequently reference overhealing, so I wanted to get a full picture. My graphs never have ill intent. The point of my graphs uh, are and always have been reporting info and acquiring knowledge. Very rarely share my opinions um, on things. And then you know, sort of after the you know, this is my proper statement. We then um, yeah, I provide provide these numbers which is why you see numerous content creators uh, using them. Yes, I know. I know I'm bragging. Oh, well, it's fun. We like, we like, uh, we like knowledge yeah. as well. Um, if you wanted my personal opinion, if you remove the two extremes, Antorus and Nathria, you have a range of 25 to 38, which isn't that vast considering that's five or so years of raiding, numerous class reworks, and even a brand new talent system. Personally, feel that while yes, Dragonflight does include the most overhealing since Antorus, there are other variables that come into play. We have the most linear gearing we've ever had uh, in that time frame. We have access to better uh, gear more frequently, and we have a profession system that gets used, even if embellishments have been hit or miss. People are getting four set, yep, uh, their four set bonus in week two. That's like an interesting thing. If you have your four set in week two and you're doing easy bosses, are you going to be more likely to do more overhealing? Um, I mean, certainly as, I mean, as a, as a disc priest, yeah. I mean, we kind of can't help but do overhealing. Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. Before I get accused of saying it's a bad thing, I'm not, hey, don't, don't, don't worry. The people who randomly accuse you of bullshit are just dickheads. Don't have to worry. Um, I like having the power early on because Mythic Plus is my main game mode. I'm also objective enough to understand it is not as enjoyable for raiders or those care about gear progression. So what do we th what do we think? What do we think overall? I mean, clearly it seems that if... Like, it's weird from my perspective. I, I feel like my personal experience is almost kind of useless here because, like, uh, even progging Heroic, which up until whenever Matt came back from Japan, I was doing and I will be back to doing soon, other than heroic progging, um, I mean that. Well, that's you know, clearing normal, re-clearing, progging some heroic, having my four set. But I've been doing that with like because uh, I think Eric's about the same as me with gear. But Pop, the other disc priest that I play with, she plays a lot of WoW, and wow. Uh, you know she was like twenty something item levels ahead of me all the time. Like, massive item levels, you know, doing the keys, all the stuff. So, for me, it's like, yeah, I've had loads of overhealing. Yeah, healing's been really easy. But I've also been playing with probably, like, one of the, I don't know, very high percentile healers in Europe. <laughs> like, she's seriously insane. So, oh, yeah. I feel like Strip even though there are, like there are things here that correlate with my experience, purely from heroic mode, I, I just, I don't even think anything... I just have a feeling that anything I'm talking about here is barking completely up the wrong tree because it correlates my personal experience, but my personal experience is only that for a reason external to this. I don't, yeah. think, I don't think it's causal for, for my personal experience of healing. Because, uh, I mean, Aberus, I had a fantastic time healing. All great, even though its number is, you know, quite a bit lower in terms of, you know, 33% as, of, you know, sort of the percentage change is quite significant. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to think. What do you think? You you smart brain man. Not today. I'm not smart brain man oh, today. No smart brain my man. smart brain is Darn. fucking gone. Um, but realistically, I it's it's a thing with <coughs> difficulty in this game overall. I think and healers are maybe the maybe the one part where the like where healing is so fundamentally there with failure, there with how it goes. If you don't heal, you die. Like that's the problem. So. 
like my experience in, I was talking to this with Leon a little bit, uh, where my experience in M plus and even a little bit of reading is World of Warcraft, maybe it's because I'm like, uh, like how Guardian Druid plays in things or maybe just how like range DPS is feeling a little bit. Maybe I just have the slightly different perspective than usual, but there's something insane to me about how World of Warcraft difficulty feels. The game is boring as hell. It's so unbelievably easy that you're just full resident sleeper. Until you're screwed. Until. Bam! Until it is killing you immediately. Like, there's... It it never feels like it's a little bit hard. It never feels like, oh, that was a wee bit, that was a wee bit squeaky. It's always... It it is full on. I'm having the time of my life. I'm half asleep at my keyboard. Or I am actually trying not to piss myself. If we were talking in terms of Halo, which I know sounds weird, but Mm. it's as if there is normal mode and legendary mode and there's no heroic mode. Yeah. Oh, yeah was, I think it was called Heroic in Halo. Or was and, veteran? I've forgotten. I no, Veteran was Call of Duty. Yeah, and it's not even about, like, um, difficulty. Like, I'm talking about, like, how hard things are. It's more that it's really binary feeling. It's either easy or murdering you. And that's because of how all of the, like, failure things are, how the, the game's designed. Where you either do the thing right and it's super easy, or you do the thing wrong and it's super hard. And that's a lot of like M plus to me where I never feel like, like as a tank, I, and to be fair, I'm not like doing particularly like hard stuff, but as a tank, I feel like I am not, I never have to think about my survivability or anything until someone, until like a boss is done really badly or until we pull wrong or until, you know, I have a group that aren't interrupting correctly. And then it's like, oh, we can't win this. Because the the mm-hmm. the situation has changed to be unwinnable. So like it's not a great experience to me at the minute. Like tanking. Or maybe some of that's because I like bear isn't as fun compared to <laughs> what I call it. it is the most sleepy spec in the universe. Yeah, maybe like it's not like I really love playing prop paladin because I have so many ways to do things. Yeah. Whereas a bear I'm just like mashing thrash and raise and mangle and half sleeping. Uh, which I like. I don't think it's terrible. It's just not super engaging to me. Uh, and then DPS is just you're doing your DPS and you're doing the mechanic right. And I think that can feel good, but I think it feels better as a melee than a ranged a lot of the time to me. Because I don't think doing as much damage as possible on a mob pack is a particularly fun experience. Like, I don't feel like the design's super there. It's okay. Like, it's really fine. But um, it, it, it depends what that represents. If it's just idly doing that, sure. But yeah. if you maybe get some new gear and then you notice, oh, I'm up 8%, I feel really good about this. Yeah. That's going to feel good because it's kind of representing your achievement. Yeah. It's kind of... it's there's just Like, in, in terms of how that should feel in the game design of WoW. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's just, like, there's a lack of granularity. Uh, the thing that I find fun is doing, making sure mechanics go down well. And that's kind of rare here and there. And it's just, if it goes wrong, you're dead. And that's fine. It is like a literal, it's a binary test. But the lack of granularity and success or failure is actually kind of, uh, kind of stressful. And it, so do you think that's why, I know in the, you know, the the chart of like players entering flow? Yeah. Where you do have... Yeah, it's like, it's hard. Yeah, wow, it's, it's yeah. either boring or it's so stressful you don't want to engage anymore. Yeah, ex- it's exactly that where And then I, when it's boring, all that it is is gear, 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 gear. And then maybe that's a part of why we end up speaking about gear so damn much. Yeah, because... Oh, shit! Because it's... I need a klaxon for like when a big thought has happened. Yeah, I mean, it's the same of... um, It's the... How do I put this? Uh, It's like I haven't... I've been enjoying M plus ish with people, but I really haven't been like gear doesn't feel particularly meaningful to me because we're walking over heroic and I know it's easy enough that I can just like with my current gear, as long as I had people, as long as I had a full grip, I could do twenties like with like four or five, nine, I could just generally gear. I'm not particularly like, I don't right. feel, I don't feel like I'm been driven to gear. So because did I don't you need feel it that's, yeah, so it's like one of the levers in World of Warcraft then is um, mechanics and tools to counter them. Mm-hmm. And then the other lever is number go up because it's an RPG. Obviously, look at like Diablo 
and you can see those two levers play out. But the whole point of a game like Diablo is that eventually your level of number go up just outscales shit like insane, mm. combined with the specifics of your build. Within World of Warcraft, are you maybe thinking that our core character builds are too strong? And that means that the numbers then don't really matter as much. It, which then makes the numbers feel like a bunch of noise on top of what you perceive as the signal. Then if you look at a game like World of Warcraft Classic or TBC or maybe even Wrath, where you have so much less going on, um, you have less going on, you have less power, uh, you know, you have like less utility than, you know, you, you will have had at like peak, you know, maybe Mop or Dragonflight, whenever there's just utility going everywhere. Because um, it is interesting with healing, a lot of these same discussions were happening in Mop back when we had all the utility in the universe and all the Blizzard could do was make, uh, you know, make a health bar whack-a-mole. Yeah, it just... It's a signal to noise thing. Yeah. So in a way... Yeah, it's like, what is World of Warcraft? Because if you reduce the signal of, like, those mechanic stuff, then the numbers and the gear will matter more. Mm -hmm. Which, if you look at, say, Classic, is kind of what you get. Yeah. And I feel like some of these are competing scopes of game design. Because at the highest scope of game design, you could say, or maybe, no. On the highest scope of game design, you could say that there's a lot of big wins in the older way of doing things. Of like, you know, huge less year, mechanical complexity, year. just a whole, you know, whole bunch of stuff. There may be loads of buttons, but you only use seven of them. Um, and, you know, you don't press them as often or, you know, whatever, older sort of school of design. Whereas now, it's as if every single detail in the game has a designer making it interesting which maybe naturally just means that World of Warcraft has... Basically, World of Warcraft is the anti dieter Rams of design, where, you know, if you're going to say less is more, you know, good design is the minimum amount of design that you need to get the thing, you know, done and good, and anything more just creates a cluttered, worse product. Um, do you almost then have that thing of, like, all the bits are, 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 are better, but then it's harder to bring them all together whenever the game itself is such a broad experience versus... Uh, game design that maybe would benefit from that level of refinement and polish to every little detail that you might have in like a, you know, big single player, you know, 400 team sort of style of game, like a Naughty Dog or a Santa Monica or an Insomniac. Sorry, I know I just completely soapbox there. <laughs> yeah, no. Let Jesus uh, take the wheel. Uh, yeah, that last comparison to like a Santa Monica actually really worked for me because you know what the problem with world of warcraft is mm. i think in a lot of gameplay ways is that it's it's again it's very binary you have so many options but the but you don't have many options at all because you have problems to solve and if you, you like, like those are like the binary problems, problems to solve not options i see yeah whereas because the reason i thought about it with like santa monica as an example is god of war right and what do i like about character action games I like that granularity of, would you like to press the same three buttons the whole game? Or would you like to have some sort of self-expression? Would you mm -hmm. like to express yourself in how you're like, you know, making combos happen and doing cool things and attempting all these like different, uh, different solutions to a problem? Are you, you know, are you going to like throw the Leviathan axe to freeze dudes and put the shit out of them? Or are you just going to like uh, just melee attack all the time? And in WoW, it's like you have your rotation that you do. And you press your interrupt or your stun or your CC. It's a load of it's, it's and I mean it's kind of always been this way. So I am literally just talking about the design of World of Warcraft at this point. But it's so prescriptive. It's so prescriptive and solved compared to having a decent amount of expression in it. At least that's where I kind of feel the minute. I mean, there's there's some cases for decent expression, like Ursul's vor or uh, Ursul's vortex into a typhoon to snap stuff together. There's a little bit of like optimization there, but when it yeah. comes to actual just the actual like prescribed mechanics, you are a little bit running <sighs> through, and it's success or failure based on you do this this thing that you're doing, and you always do that, and then you react to the mechanic. Is the but, is the point here? Because it's it's like this game was produced by an organization, and the structure of the organization will impact the game they produce. Because that's what's literally building the game. You know, the game will reflect how and what builds it. Mm. What we're talking about here is a problem that can't be solved by a massive team or many different sub-teams. 
The problem we're talking about here is top level design solved by like, I don't know, one to three people who really trust each other yeah, and are willing to make it. a big bet. Yeah. And I think that's fundamentally why it is such a hard problem for a massive live game to grapple. Yeah. And I don't even think this is particularly like this isn't some fit list oh the game is flawed at its at its core. Yeah, there's two it's, ways it can yeah, go. Yeah. It's yeah. literally just this is the game's design. But I think the worst part of it's coming out now because the game feels a little bit like dive kick. Because you either win or, uh, or don't. And it's so like it is on a razor's edge of what happens. So I like I wonder if, because I think a lot of the problem is that there's not really much uh, room for attrition in the game, especially on M plus. Slow there's, down. There's, yeah, there's no attrition in M plus whatsoever because mana is never an issue because you just drink between packs. So it is pure output and pure mechanical solves. There's no like, well, you're going to take 10% damage if you don't do this. And if you fail it enough times, it goes horribly wrong. Or, like, you'll eventually be worn down to death. They, they can't do that. Mm -hmm. They can do that in fights because they've got mana as, like, a... Well, they've got mana and your utility and your resources like, a thing over time. But in M+, plus, it feels like it's pure just... Yeah, you have, to, you, have to dance on, you have to dance on the razor's edge. And sometimes you're nowhere near the edge at all and it's completely fine and you have no danger. Another time you just, you know, you slip and you're gone. It speaks to how it feels. Yeah, it feels yeah. like to you binary. Yeah, and that's the thing where I find it hard to get into flow because it's either super boring or it is over. And maybe there's like a level of difficulty, uh, like of, if I was maybe doing 20s in my current gear, I would have See, more that's, like that's the thing. more opposition. You, but like, when I think about how you play games and I think about mm -hmm. the types of games you play, which is going to be Metroidvanias where you're, you know, yes. uh, versus, yes, you, do, does a Metroidvania player have the APM of a StarCraft player? Probably not, but the like, Depends on the game. Every bit of APM that they do mm. is like as fast as they can do it, right? Generally, yeah. like I look at you. I mean, I'm sure like you playing a game like Super Meat Boy or mm. Celeste when you were at your peak level of skill at a game like that. Um, Good. The closest WoW can get you to that is incompatible with your social structure. Yeah. So then it's like what engages you as a player? You just mm. can't access in WoW because that's a mythic raid. Yeah. More or less. Because uh, like, problem. yeah, that's essentially your problem. Now, a way where WoW might be able to give you some of that, but realistically probably won't because you'll outscale it with gear, is delves. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm imagining, you know, mm. you go in and you do a heroic level delve in green gear. There's a challenge. And maybe, or, you know, like, uh, I'm sure, uh, assuming you weren't being bullshitted by mechanical readability or something, that the likes of if you if you went full ass committing into like horrific visions, mm. or brawlers guild, horrific visions were pretty good, and like, they they still surely, killed you a little bit hard. Yeah. Actually, no, horrific visions were great because they had that resource management, that attrition, that you fucked your sanity here. Yeah, as opposed to so that's why it worked for you yeah. as a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually a, a perfectly good point. So we've worked out Matt's psychology and what makes game good, game bad, but in a way where it's completely unapplicable. Yeah, exactly. Wonderful. Another traditional stream segment. <laughs> we should really be a think tank. Just we really should, yeah. sit there, produce useless knowledge that's only used by media to make everyone confused. That's our job. Honestly, I'm already doing that, so like... like why aren't we charging the Tories, like, I don't know, two million a day for it? I'm, I'm going, I think that's I'm, how government like, I'm going to be really honest. I genuinely, every time we broach this topic, I go, why, why not? This is what I do with, like... This is what I do. This is what I do in my spare time. I don't even play fucking video games anymore. I just sit and think about them. I just sit and think about all this stuff and wonder. And it's a horrible curse. I wouldn't have it on anyone. But like, yeah, it, how does that... I think they could fix it by moving more to attrition if it, if it even needs fixed. Because I think maybe there's a world of like very high... Um, very high M plus where it's hard enough that it does feel like attrition mm. and there's like the mental stack to worry about but that's the thing right and it's one of the things I like about fighting games is the mental stack and it's like what are you thinking about and in WoW it's not really an awful lot well you play rhythm games yeah where you don't think of anything and it's pure pure body like well, well yeah so it's yeah. pure flow yeah like that, flow. that's why rhythm games end up working like Yes, mm. there is the, I'm playing a fighting game and I need to use my full mental faculties to defeat this opponent. But then there's, as an example, rhythm games where I suppose your 
hand to eye to I don't know however music works in here that is 100% taxed mm. to the point where it is complete flow it's like achieving the same thing I nothing nothing feels better to me than when I I'm feeling a segment of a song because I literally do not have the capacity mentally to parse it into physical reactions mm. when I can see it coming and my brain just goes what the fuck is that and then I play the song a few more times and I crack it and then I get like the, the nervous, uh, almost like the nervous system gains of I have unlocked a new like series of moves I do on like sight reading. Uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a different kettle of fish. I think there's a lot of questions about what people find fun and well. And that's the thing where we talked about this last week when it becomes easier and it's clearly becoming easier, then that's when people move over to more of like a, like the, the other things are the important part. The gearing, the fantasy elements, all that stuff becomes pretty important. And I think that's where we're, we're seeing a lot of success in that. When, when you look at like the M plus numbers, M plus numbers go up. Yeah. Uh, it's easier now. Are those correlated? Is there causation? Who knows? Probably. I would, I would certainly suggest... It certainly suggests that an easier game is played more by uh, a broader audience, for sure. I mean, that's un like, unless you're an exception, because, you know, FromSoft games would be an exception there, more or less, uh, as opposed to, like, the rule. Uh, so, I... I don't... I don't really... I'm trying to, like, concept what would solve it being super dive kicky. And when I say dive kick, there's it's, it's literally like it's a it's a it's a joke like Nidhogg. It's a joke, yeah, yeah, where like yeah. The win loss state is so binary feeling. Yeah, and dive kick is literally you have two buttons. You have uh, jump and you have dive, and you it is it is all about like hyper like micro positioning and one kick and it's over. Like, so it is just really uh, it's really weird. Can to, you to, just over, but can you just slow it down while maintaining gameplay feel? But that a healer redesign? I don't know. Because I feel like the problem is that healers are... He, he, you die when you run out of health. And, and yeah, healers and heal I, that. And I understand that from Blizzard, like, the whole just like, scale the health bar bigger! And yeah. don't buff the healers to compensate. That's yeah. like the band-aid fix to this. Yeah, and that feels like it could work, except it hasn't ever worked. <laughs> I think mean, they tried it. Yeah, and it well, yeah, but it's worked probably better than if they hadn't done anything. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's not... Pure, but we're so. still we're still mm. maybe that that gets us that triages the situation but yeah. we're still confronted with the design realities so there you mm. go we've talked about that and we uh, have no firm solutions other than i don't know can they somehow slow the game down a little bit and how do we get past the problem of everybody being so powerful in terms of the utility and stuff that um you know it creates whack-a-mole healing which is something that wow has had many times in the past I think the one that, obviously, as I've said a few times before, stood out to me the most is the domination of Disc Priests in patch 5.4, which, come to think of it, it's a long time ago. Okay.